All right, so the next phase or item on the list for the Cummings project. Uh, we've already taken care of the turbo and most of the fueling stuff. We've got a set of injectors coming, some 512s on the way, but for now we're going to do something different so that we can get ready for that. We have the delivery valves in place. Um, so right now as it is, we're already pushing the limits of the stock head gasket or the head bolts, I should say. So the guys at Power Driven Diesel have this cool kit right here. That's basically a one step up. It's not a head stud, but it's one step up from the stock head bolts. And we've got these big nasty boys right here. These are really strong. They're 25% uh, stronger than stock head bolts. It's a complete kit, as you can see here. Comes with the necessary hardware. Some lube to make it go smooth. And we've got this socket as well. It's a half inch drive socket because these are a socket style. Now the reason I'm doing this instead of head studs is because one, I'm not taking the head off. I'm gonna do this in the car. Two, I am not changing the rocker pedestals. So if you do the rocker, or if you do uh, head studs, you have to do the rocker pedestals also. They have to be machined or you have to buy some expensive stuff. It turns into a thousand dollar job versus in this case, under 200 bucks from Power Driven Diesel. And this is gonna get us the clamping force on the stock gasket, which is very well seasoned, not leaking. It's a, it's a wonderful sealed up unit for the past 220,000 miles. Why am I gonna mess with that? Why am I gonna take that gasket off? I'm gonna just replace the hardware so we can clamp it down harder. The stock bolts over time, they stretch their torque to yield. They probably have a mm, little bit of stretch to them. A lot of people will take them out and retorque them and do that. Sometimes they snap, I'm not gonna play that game. We've got these head bolts, they're stronger. They're 25% stronger than the stock. So the stock head bolts are only gonna get us to about 400 horsepower, roughly and that's pushing it. So I'm sure there's people that have gone a lot more than that, but for any extended period of time, you're going to, you're going to fail. So this will get us to about 500, 550. That's a much better number for me because we're never going to go there. 500 is probably the absolute limit for me. And uh, these head bolts can definitely handle that. So let's go ahead. It's a pretty straightforward procedure. We're just going to be taking the uh, valve covers off and one by one, taking each head bolt out and putting a new one in, torquing it to 125 foot pounds and send it. Here we go. All right, the sun is down and these bad boys are tight. There you go. Head bolt upgrade. Now let's throw it all back together. Here's the stock bolts. They were all good. They all came out decently. They had a little oil on them, a little moisture, but no, uh, no problems. So the new kit is all in. We got it all buttoned up. And, uh, you know, like I said, these, these, this hardware is not really, I'm not trying to, uh, replace like, let's say a, a head stud, but I'm just trying to put a little bit stronger head bolts in to get a little more clamping pressure. The factory head bolts came out pretty easily. I was using a, like a, an eight inch or nine inch uh, ratchet and just pulling them out. You can see I was using that to pull it out to get those head bolts, the stock head bolts loose. And you know, we're using a big torque wrench to put them in. So massive difference in in the amount of pressure i would imagine that the stock head bolts were probably only holding at about 80 or 90 foot pounds at this point so uh you know these being in at 125 foot pounds i feel better about that there sh we should have more clamping power now 
just to just to, to to make sure that we don't lose that stock head gasket at the boost level we're at now we're running 40 pounds of boost i just want to leave it there i'm not looking to run any more than this this is a pretty good setup so uh injectors probably the last thing and i'm going to retune the afc i went ahead and i put a different spring in the afc in order to get full travel because with the stock spring, you have to put a certain amount of preload in so that the spring is not just slack. And that preload puts a lot of pre-fuel, pre-turbo, pre-spool fuel in. And with the bigger injectors, we're not gonna need any of that extra fuel. So the trick here was to use one of the stock pump governor springs. Uh, it's longer, it's the same diameter, it's longer, and I tested the pressures on it. It's fully open at around 55 PSI, and it reaches the whole range of the AFC foot travel. So we'll be able to use that whole rack travel range uh, more effectively. So that's going to be a big, big tuning point on this. If you don't understand any of this stuff I'm saying, I'm sorry. It's, it's kind of a got to learn how this works type situation. I can't show you with the damn thing assembled, but watch a video on how it works. Basically, there's a vacuum actuated foot that moves forward and after, and it limits the, 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 the fuel flow amount, the rack moving. So that thing basically allows us to move a certain amount. And that judges, that, that, in, that um, dictates how much fuel is gonna be delivered to the injectors. So, again, long story short, we're not trying to make a ton more power here at this point. This is about the limit. We're, we're gonna be in the 450 range now. Um, and I think probably able to touch 500 if we're, if we're pushing it, which I don't wanna do. 400 to 450 is the, the sweet spot for this truck. We're gonna be towing with it. I'm not trying to destroy it. So we'll see, as long as this head gasket holds up with these head bolts, I'll be happy. It's an inexpensive upgrade. And uh, with the turbo and everything now, we should be able to run 40, 45 PSI, no problem throw as much fuel at it as we can and just let her eat so that's the purpose of these of this head bolt upgrade it's not to again it's not to replace head studs you're not you're not going to get the same clamping force as head studs head studs but you are going to get more clamping force than the stock head bolts at least the torque to yield bolts as they stand from the factory uh, a lot of people do retorque the stock bolts they'll reuse them they'll take them out they'll clean them they'll run them down again and they'll clamp them even harder but the actual diameter of the bolt is a tiny bit smaller. Uh, and I'm, I would have to imagine that that's gonna account for some strength when you're doing that. Remember those stock bolts are torqued to yield, so they will stretch. Uh, these bolts are not torqued to yield. They're not gonna stretch. They're, I mean, they, they probably have some stretch to them, but they're not gonna stretch like the torque to yield bolts. These torque straight to 125 um, foot pounds and then forget it, that's good. One more thing I wanted to mention I forgot that I did is this, uh, this AFC, I, I hooked up a Mac valve to the AFC to bleed off pressure. And by doing that, you'll effectively be able to turn down the power. It'll lower your fueling. It's just a Mac valve. I have to mount it still, but it's hooked up to a toggle switch. So I can just turn it on and the, drop the boost significantly and the power down. So if I'm towing or whatever, I'll be able to turn it down and then hit the switch and we got full power again. So just another cool option that you have with these mechanical fuel injection systems where you can actually control the amount of fueling and boost and power right out of the cockpit. You don't, you don't have to have any electronics per se. I mean, except for that. You could use a, 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 a pneumatic valve or a, a what you call it, manual valve. You don't have to use an electric Mac valve like I did, a solenoid. But makes it easy in cab push button power down push it again power up so just a cool idea in case you've got one of these and you want to uh do something similar you don't have to be rolling around on rage the whole time so anyway just thought i'd share that cool little tip also it doesn't affect the boost reading because we have our boost gauge plumbed to a different spot right there so you don't have to worry about it anyway that's going to do it for this little round Hopefully you guys uh, learned something. If you didn't, I'm sorry. We'll watch another video. Learn something in another video. In the next one. 
We'll see you there.